you guys are tasting Petrosian caviar, yeah, no and, and I'm going to eat some instant ramen. Good luck with that. Thanks. We'll let you know if we have extra. Okay, save me some. It's okay, I'm not bitter. Ooh! Uh, ooh! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I miss the dough. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. We are in the BA Test Kitchen, and today we are making gourmet instant ramen. Brad is in Italy, right? Yeah. He's not here. Okay. Well, I guess I won't have any help making like my own extruder or anything like that, but that's okay. Sometimes I wonder if it helps or hurts. So instant ramen was definitely something that my sisters and I would make like for an, as an after school snack, but it's been a, a very long time since I had any of it. I'm curious to taste it now and then figure out like where I can improve and make something that still feels like it's true to the instant ramen with the brick and the little um, flavor packet, but is hopefully a little better tasting. Thinking about the different flavor options, I immediately went to chicken because that feels pretty classic. Makes two eight ounce servings. I definitely ate an entire thing myself. That was not two servings. <laughs> Hilarious that it says two servings. So you can see it looks like it's kind of been folded over into this brick. I definitely kind of get like a whiff of that fried, like kind of oil oil aroma. Like the inside of the noodle is more of a bright white, whereas the outside is a little bit yellow. And that might come from the frying process. I'm not sure. The experience of eating the noodles versus like dried pasta are very different. With dried pasta, it's like so hard. With these noodles, you can tell that they're fully cooked because they kind of dissolve when you eat them. So obviously this is like extremely concentrated with a lot of salt in it. Half of a block has 830 milligrams of sodium. So that means the whole thing is 70% of your daily salt intake. It's very yellow, so chickeny. Sort of, not really. Lots of that like umami flavor. It's what you taste in soy sauce or mushrooms, like this very sort of savory flavor. Essentially where I think I would go for this, and to no one's surprise, like I would use a dehydrator. Basically making a highly, highly concentrated chicken stock and then dehydrate it and grind anything that's left to a powder. With the noodles, I think it's gonna take a little bit of research. I'm gonna go ahead and make them according to the actual cooking directions. I like this raw really oh my gosh these soften and hydrate in the water and it becomes these curly very bouncy noodles that'll be a really important thing i don't want the noodles to turn into mush when i add the boiling water salty it's certainly not like a really clean tasting chicken flavor it's a good food like i get it there is some elasticity still like they don't just break apart so even in its curly form, that's 16 inches in length. But if I stretched it out even further, it would be pushing 18 inches in length. That's really long. I think there's a lot of room to improve in the broth. With the noodle, it's going to be more about trying to match that texture. Chris, yeah. okay. if you don't mind, please join me. What do we have to maintain and what can we improve? The wave is key. So right. I can go for more chicken flavor. Yes. Should I fry it in schmaltz? For chicken flavor. <laughs> chicken flavor. It's, I'm sorry, I just remember. It took me back. The noodles, I want them to curl and tangle. Great. Is this going to be like a dry seasoning packet that you're uh, going to do? Yeah. Well, we're going to try. Like, so get yeah, all that umami in there. I would want like there. a super umami bomb. <laughs> okay, thanks, Delaney. All right, my favorite part and a very informative step, reading the ingredients. Enriched flour, parentheses, wheat flour, no, thiamine, I mean, nitrate, acid, acid, palm oil, salt, contains less than 2% of autolyzed yeast citric acid, extract, disodium, guanolate, disodium, cyanate, disodium, succinate, I have no idea what that is, dry garlic egg white, hot carbonate, malted onion powder, powder, sugar, TBHQ, and then parentheses, preservative, wheat. Wow, who would have thought? Conspicuously no MSG. Oh, do we have MSG? I'm definitely adding MSG to my version. <laughs> and now I think would be a good time to go to the computer and see what I can find about, particularly the noodle process. The dried noodle block was originally created by flash frying cooked noodles, and this is still the main method used in Asian countries, but the air dried noodle blocks are favored in Western countries. I still don't understand what is an air fryer. It literally looks like a big microwave. It's like a way of crisping things without deep frying. That, that might be a possibility. So there are three key ingredients in wheat based noodles wheat flour, water, and salt. The optimal amount of water is 30 to 38% of flour weights. So this is gold, this is great information. Okay, so there's something called kansui, if I'm saying that right. 
It's an alkaline solution consisting of a 9 to 1 ratio of sodium carbonate to potassium carbonate, which contribute to the springiness and chewiness characteristic of ramen. I don't know if we can get that, but maybe we can make it. To make it basic? Bro had a great idea. We could try adding a little bit of a baking soda solution to reduce the um, acidity, make it a little more basic. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. That told me something. So working the dough is one way to develop gluten. This whole research process was very, very helpful. Okay, so the plan is work on the noodle, try to get a shape and texture that I like, and then tomorrow will be a day where I focus on making that flavor packet, and then hopefully putting them together tomorrow or Friday. I am a little bit concerned about like getting that wave in the noodle, but that's like more cosmetic. A bigger concern is just that the noodles have the right texture and that they dehydrate properly and then reconstitute without falling apart. I have a vague idea of how to do everything. It's just, I'm sure there'll be like lots of twists and turns along the way. I'm going to start with about 500 grams of bread flour and then I'm gonna measure all the other ingredients in proportion to the flour by weight. Make a well in the center and dump in the water. This is just so stiff and dry. Maybe 30 to 38% hydration is too low for like a homemade version. I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit of moisture. Don't look over here, Chris. Don't, don't look at this. Well, I looked on the internet and, and Wikipedia said the doughs that they use to make the noodles are between 30 and 38% hydration. Okay. Turns out when you try to make them yourself with King Arthur bread flour, it's like nowhere near enough water. It's so firm. I've said like five times, like the last time I'm going <laughs> to spritz it. I think I just don't want to do this anymore. It's loosened up. So finally, I'm gonna form it into a ball, wrap it in some plastic and let it rest, and I'll come back here and try to roll it out in 20 minutes or so. I have the hand crank pasta machine, and Rhoda just showed me that attachment that cuts strands. Every ridge, that will, that's, represents like the width of a noodle, and it looks really close. This has softened nicely, actually. So I'm gonna start to sheet the dough and then use this attachment to cut them into the thin noodles. I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut them. Rhoda, does it attach? It must attach here. There must be a piece that attaches it. So I think it attaches like this. Hmm. There's no piece, huh? I think, oh, it just sits there while you feed it through. Ooh. There you go. Please edit that out. The dimensions of these, I think, look really good. So I want to just cook these and test that texture. If they have that sort of bouncy chewiness that we're looking for. Wow. First of all, I undercooked them. But they, I mean, good. look, they have, how, see how they stretch? Mm -hmm. So 13 seconds was not enough. Let me try the full 30 this time. Okay. That like really good. Do you have a plan for how you're The curl? <laughs> no, yeah. I do not. I think I'm going to have to physically create the wave. Maybe you could like put them over a little like a little closely ridged rack. Just yeah, like a lot of people are saying something like this. I don't think that anyone's fully thought it through. So the idea is to take little groupings of noodles, poke them through. This is a terrible idea. Chopstick. Yeah, maybe some kind of poking device. Oh no, that's not really gonna work. I think what I really need is something to set on top of it that will thread them through. Actually, these are better, but I want to at least set them side by side. The idea is to fold this over and have it be about the same shape. I'm really... It took hey, so long. You got long. this, you got oh. this. Oh, that's and it good really what helps. you're doing. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's not really working. Is there an easier way to do this? Uh, I wish there was of. something that was like this same shape, but the reverse that you could like. Well, this could is, you? I could, but like this bar gets in the way. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. What am I saying? Okay, okay, I have, I have an idea. Okay, I need something flat, thin, long, and heavy to press down on either side of these skewers. I need like a soldering iron. I wanna cut off the ends of this rack so that I can just weave the noodles 
in and out of these spikes. A soldering iron, is that right? Hey, Emil, yeah. I want to cut off this edge of the... Wire cutters. Of, ooh, this might work. I feel like we're robbing a bank. And then you just... Bit. Oh, no, 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 please be careful. The most important thing is the noodles. Yay! Ah. Spread them like so. Oh, wait. How do I fold them, though? Wait, you guys. I, but I have to fold them. I don't know how to do it. Okay, so what I want to do before I go home is finish forming and weaving all the cooked noodles that we did. And then I'm gonna leave them in the refrigerator overnight uncovered. I don't wanna dehydrate them fully because I still want them to be somewhat pliable tomorrow so that I can fold them into that brick. And then tomorrow we're gonna try forming them, frying them, and then the real test, which is like soaking them and rehydrating them. Okay, you can get the nice sunset in the background. And it's very chef's table, right? I feel pretty good about yesterday, minus the part where I needed pasta dough for like one hour. Actually, my arms are a little sore. So I wanna check on the noodles and see how those are. They've gotten pretty dry. I think I might still be able to fold them into this kind of like brick shape. So overall, I think it's like not too bad. But I need to come up with a way to kind of fit it into like a mold that I can fry it in. But I need something basically square. I liked, That's I like liked metal. my, you know, my drying rack, like cage idea, just bend the SHIT out of it. But we have those skinny ones, can we do it to those? Or what if we just cut it in half and then you have two halves and you just put the two halves together yeah. as the cage? Oh yeah. I want to just rinse these off to get rid of any parts of metal and then try to fit the noodles. I want to just fry these until the bubbles kind of stop. I apologize to the test kitchen for basically destroying their supply of cooling racks. Okay, obviously it took on a little too much color. These noodles here in the center are still a little bit soft. It didn't fry evenly. Wow, Claire, look at that, <laughs> look what you've done. Is this really gonna like rehydrate? I don't know, that's what we're gonna find out. I'm very worried. It's like, what's really well, happening? It's kind of like it's dissolving. Yeah, it does. Because if you just took the noodles and like, like oh. No. Them up. <laughs> it's not. It's okay. not right. Nope. But they're total mush. Maybe cooking the noodles less on the front end. I can try steaming them and then frying them at a lower temperature. Oh, I need to talk to Brad. They're mushy and like greasy. Should I try air frying them? See what happens? There's just the question of like the noodle to begin with too. You know, the alkalizing of the noodles. Like Make it, it more al like alkali? It, it has that mitigating, you know, effect right. in terms of like, you know, just not blowing out. And we could try baking the baking soda, which increase, increases the alkalinity, mm -hmm. apparently. Let's do it. Baking turns sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, into sodium carbonate. I'm hoping that by using more of the baked baking soda, that it just helps the noodles themselves like retain their texture. So this has to rest for a little while longer. In about, I'll try rolling out in like a half an hour. I want to get the stock started. That's important. I gotta let that go for several hours. So the plan is to build a really concentrated chicken stock with all of these aromatics in it, strain it, and puree into it some solids. So once it's dehydrated, I'll add in some MSG. All right, so this dough has been sitting for about an hour. I'm going to roll out two test portions. So one boiled, one steamed, and then both air fried until dry to just see if there's a really noticeable texture difference. It's a little bit R2D2. I have no idea how this thing works. Oh wait, there's a little thing at the top. Cooking guide. Uh... I'll do 300 for just a couple minutes, and then I'll turn it down back to 200 and go for the remainder of the time. <laughs> they really crisped a lot. I think maybe the steamed ones got a little browner. Certainly both got browner than I intended. So next time, 
have to moderate the temperature a little bit and continue to cook them longer in the air fryer. This time I should cover them with like some plastic so the noodles really hydrate. So the stock has been going for about an hour and a half. I'm going to take out some of the aromatics that I want to puree, strain the rest of the stock, and then start reducing it again. How many minutes has it been? Literally no one said anything. These have been sitting here. For, I got so distracted with the stock. It's been like 10 minutes. God, I've overcooked them. Actually, actually, the boiled ones are not bad. It's like I mean, a little bouncy. Yeah, you got a little, definitely a little more elasticity this time than before, even with overcooking if the noodles. If you hadn't soaked this too long, I really think like you're basically there. Great, okay. that's what I love to hear. Maybe I'll do one more test, but first I'm gonna blend this mixture. <laughs> it's really chickeny. So this is that stock that's reducing, like a lot of depth of flavor. Is that gonna be dehydrated? <laughs> Molly, I was like, this is what people eat who can't have solid food. Yeah, it's adult baby food. It's adult baby it's food. Delicious, you should start, you should start lying. <laughs> how big, how big is the market for that? I feel like that's a it bad business big. idea. If I took that to Shark Tank, they'd be like, absolutely not. Yeah. You know how much I love Shark Tank. Yeah, I know. It's my favorite <laughs> So I'm gonna dehydrate this and, and then pulverize and then pulverize it, but I'm gonna also add then like MSG because it's kinda under seasoned. Yeah. My concerns about this are the following. One, that's just not gonna fully dry. Two, there's ingredients in here like sugar and collagen that aren't gonna wanna fully dry. We're just gonna have to see. I'm gonna put them into our you might notice this is a different dehydrator. Okay, that's 140, timer 18 hours. <sighs> Let me just recap. So with like Rhoda's help, I cut the rest of the noodles. We blanched them all, drained them, and then tossed them with chicken fat that we had. So they all, they look great. I'm really happy with them so far. <sighs> My goal before I leave tonight is to get everything dried and then just kind of like ready to go for tomorrow. Let me see if I can even kind of start to get these all at least going in parallel lines. And now I'm gonna put that in there at the lower temp. So I'm gonna do 10 minutes. Ooh, not at all dry. I'm gonna turn it to 200. I'll check again in five minutes. <laughs> like eight hours. I took a seat because I'm a little tired. They are getting there, but not there yet. It's getting crispier. I'm just gonna keep checking it. I think, look, it's getting to the point where things are really winding down. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna address this stuff tomorrow. We're just gonna, I'm gonna slap some plastic on it and put it off to the side. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm young. I was like sitting down. It's like, it's, uh, something's gonna happen here. Something's it's gonna been, happen it's, here. It's just been like a very long day of shooting. I actually feel fine, but I do have a lot to do when I get home, so I have to conserve energy. So, <laughs> okay. I think after many minutes, I think we're there. They definitely got kind of brown, but in a fairly uniform way. <sighs> okay, so you can, can you see the fold? <sighs> definitely the color is a big difference. This is much darker, yellower, and kind of browner. Whoa, <laughs> did you do it in the air fryer? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have the wave. No, it doesn't have the wave, but who cares about the wave? Oh, I'm so glad you said that, because I don't. We're gonna do a quick boiling water test. This the chicken meat and some of the aromatics. Oh my God, <laughs> that was like super. <laughs> Doesn't it smell chickeny? Oh, All right, don't forget about it like I did last time. Okay, are they cooked? I think if you cook them in water, like boil. Like actually water, boil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, but I think you're like, I think it's gonna work. Like it's kind of chewy. Yeah. Like if you boil that in like boiling water, like in a pot, like properly. Like 30 more seconds. Right. They have a good flavor. They were lightly coated in schmaltz. I think you're like. Close. Really almost there. Okay, good. I agree with Christina and Emil, maybe a little bit of like a brief boil, um, just to really fully cook the noodle and then take it off the heat. Very curious about this whole like dehydrating chicken thing. We'll know tomorrow and hopefully put it all together. I'm very curious to see how the stock has been dehydrating. Okay, you guys, I think this is really good. You can see it's totally dry. I think that I can grind this into a really fine powder in the blender. 
the color has kind of a nice golden hue to it. I think it looks great. This is MSG. It kind of gets a bad rap. I have no problem with MSG, and it does add like such a great umami flavor to things. So I might do a salt MSG combo because MSG is seasoning, but it's not salty the way salt is salty. I think that's good. Now I'm gonna add in the chicken base. You can see it's like definitely not dissolving. Mmm. It is like chicken soupy. I'm gonna put this in the blender to just make sure everything dissolves and then I want Chris to taste it. Wow. Chickeny, right? Very chickeny. He needs looks, more salt. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of celery salt and then maybe other, uh, like a red chili flake. Mm. Overall, let me just back up and say, yeah. like, pretty impressive. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I have crushed red pepper flakes, garlic, and onion powder, celery salt, and turmeric, because, like, why not? I'll make it a little golden. I really like it. I think it's good. You like it less. I like it less. <laughs> Do you need the garlic and like onion powder? Is it just too much? It I might, think a I little think bit is much. good. Maybe a tiny bit is okay. But <laughs> it's also like you actually get a little bit more of the texture. Because it's a little gritty? Like a tiny bit. Okay. Right, I'm going to grind everything together like really fine in the Vitamix. All right. I'm just going to do exactly what Chris said. Okay, so definitely grinding it into that really fine powder helped a lot. It tastes really good. Time to now finish dehydrating all the noodles that I have left. I knew we did this thing for a reason. So we have this vacuum sealer. You've probably seen Brad use it a lot. So I can kind of try to make my own little bags. One for the seasoning packet, one for the noodles. This is yours? Yeah. Vacuum sealed it? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. This was that very first one, and I put it in its own little container. This is the one that I wove into the wires of that rack. This one obviously looks really nice, has some wave definition in the noodles. I think that when it cooks up, it's going to look really great. Carla, you want to taste yeah. some instant ramen in like okay. two minutes? Yeah. It's important that I dissolve this into the mixture first because it doesn't dissolve as easily as the stuff in the package. Immediately, it smells great. They're absorbing water, which is then flavored with that mixture. So it's giving the noodles a lot of flavor in a good way. Honestly though, it is such like a chewy noodle and the soup tastes really, really good. So I'm feeling confident. Oh, Chris. Oh, hi, Molly. Carla was here for the weaving. The yeah? noodles are a funny nice color. Spice <laughs> this is really impressive. Really? The flavor yeah. of the soup is really good. The texture mm. of the noodles is Pretty so good. springy. So this is the one that we're saving for the beauty. This is the one where I, I wove the noodles. Yeah. So you yeah. got you get you get that look. Yeah. yeah. You should just sell that powder mix. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I was yeah. gonna say how much of these go for It a might pop. be a business idea. Yeah, how much do you think one Right, we're talking cost more than thirty five cents. One thousand right? dollars. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a thousand dollars. Oh. Yay, thanks guys. I need to go back. Big tuna will it, but, uh, <laughs> if this was on Alex Eats at all, right? This is the three day instant noodle. So it takes three days to take to make it, right? Uh-huh. And I'd wait three days in line to eat. <laughs> is that an episode we can look forward to? Maybe not. Really? I already found the best record. Oh. oh, he's a charmer. That's it. That's a wrap. Here is how you make gourmet instant noodles. For the noodles, stir 280 grams water, 10 grams kosher salt, and 5 grams baked baking soda until dissolved. Place 500 grams bread flour in a large bowl and create a well. Pour water mixture into a well and knead to combine. Cover with plastic and let rest one hour at room temperature. Roll out dough a portion at a time using a pasta roller, then cut into thinnest noodles possible. Boil noodles for one minute in a large pot of water. Transfer to an ice bath, then toss with a half teaspoon chicken fat. Fry in an air fryer at 180 Fahrenheit, about 20 minutes. For the stock, heat a few tablespoons chicken fat in a large pot at four pounds chicken wings and cook till brown. Add one cup cooking wine, cover with cold water, then add onion, a carrot, a large leek celery stalk, garlic, dried shiitake mushrooms, little cake garni, black peppercorns, turmeric, ginger, a quarter cup soy sauce, and three tablespoons white miso. Bring to a boil, reduce to a simmer, and strain stock into a smaller pot and reserve about three cups solid. Cook stock over medium high until about a half cup remains. 
Blend valets with reduced fat to a smooth puree. Spread in a thin layer onto baking sheets and dehydrate for 18 hours at 120 Fahrenheit. Break sheets into pieces and pulverize to a fine powder in a blender. For the seasoning packet, combine ground dehydrated powdered stock, MSG, kosher salt, ground turmeric, ground crushed red pepper flakes, ground white pepper, celery salt, ground garlic powder, ground onion powder in a blender and blend until finely ground. Measure out into portions to create seasoning packets. Bring two cups water to a simmer. Whisk in seasoning packet until dissolved. Add noodles and cook for one to two minutes. Remove from heat and serve immediately. How much would a single packet cost? For you? <laughs> <laughs> or? If you didn't know it was me and I walked on, into a store. In the marketplace. In the marketplace. Um, like if this were my business? Yeah. <laughs> As I said already, I'm thinking about I watch a lot of so. Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 50 bucks. A packet? Yeah. Yeah, it's worth it.